Hey guys, today I'm going to show you PDF analysis using a tool out there called PDF Stream Dumper. It's a free tool, which means it's the best price around, and you can grab it from this website. And it's actually a collaboration of multiple tools, which you can see here in the about, um, a lot of them. So this is a quite impressive thing, and like I said, for free, you really can't go wrong. So we have a malicious PDF over here that I have for analysis. And I got it from Contagio.com, uh, I think. I can post it, the actual link, into my blog. So I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. So anyways, this is it loading. And these are all the objects. So you have to kind of think of PDFs as trees. So each object can be a branch, which branches off potentially into other branches. And this can be a way that um, this is normal. This is how PDFs are created. But it's also a way that malicious hackers and malicious users can um, kind of hide their code and confuse analy analysis. So we have only 14 objects here, but sometimes PDFs can have hundreds and hundreds of objects. Once again, this is just another way to befuddle analysts. So one thing that PDF Stream Dumper has is the options to hide duplicate streams and hide header-only objects. So let's just hide the duplicate streams here. And there's no duplicate streams. I should point out here, down here at the bottom, this kind of tells you, gives you a, a quick analysis of, of all these objects, what PDF stream number C. So we have one action item. Now this would be something that would be performed uh, as soon as the PDF is opened. So that could be something potentially malicious. We have a font file, which could also be potentially malicious. And we have one JavaScript, which is also malicious. <laughs> And then we have four streams, which are kind of compressed, encoded data, which once again also could be a sign of a malicious file. Now, these sometimes in and of themselves do not indicate it's a malicious file, so you have to do analysis. Uh, a lot of forms that have, um, that have, you can actually input text into fields, they have JavaScript involved. So if it has JavaScript, you can't just automatically assume it's malicious, but it's something that you have to take a greater look at. So anyways, let's move on and let's hide the header only up. So now this will hide the objects that don't have any streams. So since there was four, there were 14, it hid 10. So this gives us a little bit more to, to play around with. So let's just quickly, okay, that's just some XML. And this is the, the font. We can actually go to, oops, not this. You can do a search. You can search for um, JavaScript. You can search for the TTF fonts, which there you go, it's at 10, so that's the TTF. So there's a bunch of things you can look for obfuscated headers, it's all of them, interesting. So this most promising thing, and especially we see here right off the bat, we have some obfuscated code. So now PDF Stream Dumper has this JavaScript UI, which allows us to manipulate this. Here we go. Let's just make this a little bigger. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is format JavaScript because it's just nice to have your code looking nice even when it's a malicious user's code. It's just a nice thing. Hold on. It's thinking. Okay, sorry about that. I'm running in a VM and it's not, uh, not the fastest thing in the world. Okay, so we have unescape selection and manual escape. So if you want to select a whole item, you can hit unescape selection and it will deobfuscate it for you. Now this is hex, so it's hex to car. Now here you have to kind of take care that there's a, um, there's actually text in here as well. Another thing you could do if you're kind of concerned is you can actually just go in and manually hit the one that you want. So let's just, let's just hit control C and do unescape selection. So there we go. So this is a little bit tedious. But in the sake of analysis, it's not always super quick and super easy. And this is actually a lot easier than what it had to be done, you know, years ago. So let's just, oops, make sure you're highlighting what you need here. Here, let me, let me pause this and get, uh, get through to the good stuff. Okay, so we have most of the hex deobfuscated. So now there's another function uh, feature here called where to go exploit scan. And you see here 
this has found potentially two exploits, collect email info and get icon. And there's get icon and there's collect email for it. So it even says that other exploits may be hidden with obfuscation. So potentially if we ran this before we did the deobfuscation, it might not have found these things, which which is something that the malicious users try and do, so it will get past A V. So this looks like more obfuscation and definitely looks like some shell code here. And it also has plus signs to try and break it up once again to try and evade detection. So we can highlight all of this and we can do simplify selection quotes and this will concatenate everything all together. And then let's just quickly, now we don't want to, we see here that there's some hex in here kind of embedded into with all the shell code. And we don't want to deobfuscate the shell code because it's probably going to turn into gibberish. So let's just do a manual escape and do the slash x. We see here that actually deobfuscated into more shell code. So another thing you can do is if you want this, there's a thing called toolbox, which you can put down here. So now there, this is something that I don't fully understand the complexities involved. So I'm just going to quickly show you one way to try and show you what this actually decodes to, which is it's going to be gibberish. But you do TB, which is toolbox, sees the class, and then you just have to put the whole thing in quotes. And then when you hit run, whatever this equates to is going to show up in the toolbox right here. So you run. Maybe. Oh, there we go. Oops. TB. Oh, it's TBT. Sorry, my bad. So the toolbox is a, is a, like I said, there's a bunch of other features in here that I'm not even going to touch upon. And if you had any questions, let's just see if this is going to work. Yes. So this is what, this is the output of this. So as you can see, this is gibberish to us. It's shell code, so we might not actually understand it. And before I forget, if you go to the main site, there's help videos. There's all these videos here that the creator made to kind of show you all the features of PDF Stream Number. And I highly recommend that you go through them because it's very, very useful. So, so we can't read this, so what do we do? Well, let me just quickly clean that up a second here. Well, we can PDF stream dumper nicely thought of this and we actually have a um, shellcode analysis so let's do sc log which runs live okay so there's a bunch of options here you can do let's allow any dll to load and let's let's just so once again see this is the code this is what it, it decodes to that's what we saw down here kind of gibberishy so let's launch this Yes, yes, we know exactly what we're doing. So this is the export, the shellcode running right now. So now you see this git file size. Now if you let this sit here and run, it's just going to sit here and it's not actually going to execute anything. What it's looking for is the file that that this came with. So it's actually looking for the PDF because the file or exploit, whatever it's trying to do, is actually embedded in the PDF. So let's just quickly close that. Once again, these guys thought of everything. And you can actually open the file, so it'll open this while it's executing it so that it knows where to look for to get this malicious file or whatever it's doing. You can also log the output of the, um, the shellcode logger to a file, and that would be useful for your reporting. So let's just do a quick launch. And oh, and if you want this run with a completely live, you know, everything's going and executing, you can do no safety net. Don't highly recommend that, but you know if you're running on a system that you trust and you have a you know non-trivial network, or you want to see if it's doing anything else, by all means go ahead and run it. So we're just going to do it like this. Now there's a bunch of ways you can analyze PDFs. There's a great tool out there created by Lenny Zeltzer called Remnux, and you can get it as a VMware image, and you can do um, analysis of a PDF on the command line through that with some tools by Didier Stevens, or you can even set up uh, INET SIM, which is basically a network simulator simulating network services for your you know, malicious PDF to go to. So if it's looking for DNS, um, INET SIM can mimic that. If it's looking for 
um, a web server, iNetSim can simulate that. It can simulate um, all types of, of services, and it's all done in a lab, so you don't have to worry about it going out and you know grabbing something potentially nasty on your system. So it's a great way of seeing how the code interacts. So we see here, this is done, and we see some creating a file called Documents and Settings, Administrator, Local Settings, Temp, Spool, Serve, SV.exe. And generally that's not a good sign. I don't know many PDFs that uh, should be doing that. And it is executing it. And then we also see it creating a file on the desktop, uh, r underscore one one PDF. So it's actually recreating the file it looks like. So it looks so it just actually looks like something's there. And it's not actually opening it. And if you actually try and open this, it gets you an error and it exits out anyways. So that's interesting. Let's quickly go and see if that exe is actually where it's supposed to be. So let's quickly, let's show hidden files. Okay, let's see. Mm, documents and settings. So there it is, spoolsv.exe. And you can also see it's, it sets itself as a hidden file, so it actually won't even show up. Because like I said, uh, in default, um, hidden files are, if it's a hidden file, it won't show up. It's, it's, it's hidden. It's doing what it's supposed to do, as you can see here. Not, not there. Not there at all. So the normal user wouldn't actually even see this. So good way of hiding itself. So apply. All right, so now what can we do with this file? Well, we can do a quick string search on it, which is a, once again, a sys internals tool, Mark Rusinovich. And just do a quick, see if we can see anything abnormal. Well, it's getting a command line, so it's probably doing something with the network, terminating some processes. Well, it's doing something to its to the network to the computer. Get process address loading a library. So probably not probably not a good thing. Now you could also another thing you could do is take the MD oops take the MD5 hash and you can put that into a website like such as Virus Total or Threat Expert and see if this has been seen before in the wild and it has been seen in the wild. Or if you want to, if you're in a you know secure, enclosed, not connected to the internet or non-attributable network, you can actually let this sucker run and see what it does. So let's do that. I have a tool here called Capture Bat. It's a great tool. It'll show you all the registry settings changed, all the um, files that were created, modified, deleted. You know, so you set this up before you actually execute your malware, and then it'll show you exactly what changes it did to the file system. It'll also, if you have network connectivity, it also let you record network traffic. So it's a really awesome tool. Let me see where it is. Here it is. Here. Yes. So let's get something else set up here. Just to, once again, Sys internals is a great thing. Let's do Process Explorer just to see if it opens up anything or if it tries to inject itself into anything. Let me pause it for a second. Okay, so here's Process Explorer running. And once again, I'll post the link to Capture Bat on, on my blog, so you don't have to worry about that. Oh, um, I should point out before I forget, this is the output from the um, PDF shellcode analysis. Once again, it's just what was shown on the screen, but once again, great for reporting. So make sure before you revert your image that you actually pull that off because then you have to do it all over again. Anyway, so I want to do capture uh, C, which I think means silence, run in the background, don't display on the screen, log the network data, and log everything to, let's just call it honk.txt. Let's not call it that because I think I already have a file. Call that maliciouspdf.txt. Okay, so let's just clean this screen. So, yeah. 
see it going, create a network number. So it's sniffing our network traffic now. And now all we have to do is run the executable and see what it does. We see here it created itself as a process. Ooh, and it just deleted itself. So that's definitely interesting. Oh, here it is, sorry. So let's just do a quick search on Process Explorer. So we see here these are the strings, which we saw before. But let's just look at the TCP IP. So it did actually go out and try and go to a website. Now, we don't know exactly what it is because I actually have Remnux running on this. So it is pointing its DNS to the Remnux machine, which is running a DNS server, and it's also running uh, as a web server. So um, this is what it's going to show you. The remote address is this or your, your local machine that you have this running on. So, But thanks to CaptureBat, if we just quickly, well, let's just, ex let's just um, kill this right now. So kill process. Okay, cancel. And let's close this. So now we're gonna, you're gonna get a bunch of information in these things because once again, it's not, again, it's not malicious file, it's monitoring, it's monitoring your entire computer. So if, if you're running other things like Cam Studio, it's gonna show up in there as well. So there it is. See we did have something already there. Okay, so once again you can actually put this, you see it's comma separated CSV, so you can actually put this in something else. But if you look through the uh, Cam Studio stuff, you see here it's creating a process, which we saw in um, Process Monitor, spool sb.exe, and then we also see it um, creating another process, so it's actually putting it out on its own. That's why we saw it disappear. But then, this is interesting, we see it setting a value key in the registry for this key, which is stub path. And this is a um, CLS ID, which is a unique identifier to a, um, a comp component object model, or also known as a COM object. And what a COM object is, is it's something that allows a, a program to interact with the operating system and other processes and other programs. If you have any questions on things like that, Google is your friend. You know, so I use it all the time, so definitely go ahead and take a look at it. So let's. Um, so what this does, I'm sorry, what StubPath does, these things are actually automatically loaded when Windows starts. So think of it as, you know, it makes itself, this is a way of making itself persistent. This, this is run, this is installed every single time Windows starts. So it's like having something in your startup folder. So let's quickly go. So I just, <laughs> you can tell I've done this before on the machine because I actually have it already set up and it's actually going right to the key. So it's under itchy local machine, software, Microsoft, active setup, installed components. This is the unique identifier and this is the stub path. So this is what's loaded every single time Windows starts up and it's spool sv.exe. So this is how it maintains persistence on your system. Now obviously if you have that on your desktop it's a little bit easier to determine hey this is potentially bad but once again it hides itself and it's in the temp directory which is somewhere that not very many people actually go and investigate. So even if it, even if you did have uh, hidden folders uh, revealed you still wouldn't actually see this. So, so basically we were able to do some pretty decent analysis of a of a PDF using this very using all free tools and yeah now obviously there's going to be some harder harder to deobfuscate JavaScript sometimes there's going to be some hex XOR encoding um, these are things that are encountered in the field and it just takes um, a lot of practice to get to you know and maybe in another video I'll show how to do that but kind of want to show you guys the power of PDF Stream Dumper and like I said. If you're interested, there are tons of help videos out here. You see this one's 40 minutes long. It's a good introduction. And um, I highly suggest going to these sites. And I, I do a video on Remnux, another great, great tool out there. And it's free. So take advantage of these free tools. So uh, keep uh, keep listening and or whatever. And I'll post all these links to my blog. And I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks.